Hello and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host, Alec Callahan, and we got some interesting news this week. As it looks like Disney might be in the doghouse with China, or specifically Marvel is. We got that, as well as some new movies in development, and of course, the box office numbers. Let's get to it. Staying in first place for the third weekend in a row is Shang-Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings, with 21.7 million for a total of 176.9 million. In second place is Free Guy with 5.2 million for a total of 108.6 million. Opening in third place was Cry Macho with 4.5 million. Fourth place was Candyman, which passed the $50 million mark, making it 3.5 million for a total of 53.1 million. Finally, in fifth place was Malignant with 2.68 million for a total of 9.88 million. Also quick to mention, Cop Shop, which opened as well this weekend, uh, came in 6th place with 2.31 million. So a lot like China, the domestic market is in a holding pattern, waiting for new films, which we only got two more weeks to go for that. As for the numbers, Shang-Chi and Free Guy continue to hold really well. Cry Macho was another disappointment for Warner Brothers, which at this point is not shocking, and Malignant continues to be the outlier in horror movies by doing poorly at the box office. Now taking a look at China, opening in first place was Cloudy Mountain, a Chinese disaster film, which made $19.1 million. Dropping to second place was Free Guy, which made another $4.8 million for a current total of $85.1 million. Behind it, in third place, was a drama film called All About My Mother, which opened with $4.7 million. However, it is important to note it was a holiday in China with the Mid-Autumn Festival, and his film in particular released on a Sunday, so only one day of sales is counted. Fourth place was Raging Fire with $4.5 million for a total of $194 million. Lastly, in fifth place was To Be With You, which opened with $2.6 million. It's going to be close, but there's still a chance for Free Guy to pass $100 million in the market, while Raging Fire is locked to pass $200 million, which is good to see. For the new movies released this week during the mid autumn Festival, nothing really made an impact as we wait for bigger films to be released. Looking toward new movies in China, well, we got things to talk about. First off, for their national day, there are two big movies releasing. The first one I mentioned last week, I want to apologize as I got the name wrong. The correct translation of the title is My People, My Parents. So we got that and The Battle at Lake Changjin, the action blockbuster movie that was supposed to come out in August before China's Delta Spike. After that, we got some Hollywood films coming at the end of the month. Dune got approved for release, as well as a release date. It will come out October 22nd, same day as the release in the United States. The following week on October 29th, No Time to Die will also be released. Now, this week's international numbers are interesting, thanks to Dune being released around Europe and parts of Asia. It opened internationally to 36.8 million in 24 markets, which is a bit better than expected. This will be an interesting rollout to watch as it will spend the next month opening in more and more countries until the end of October, where it finishes by releasing in the United States and in China. Shang-Chi held well again, making a 20.3 million for a worldwide total of 320.6 million. Malignant made another 3.1 million for a total now of 24.6 million. At this rate, it looks like it will still take a small loss looking at just box office numbers. Cry Macho opened in a few markets this weekend, making 350,000. So its worldwide opening weekend was 4.8 million. Paw Patrol the movie finally passed the 100 million mark with it at 103.2 million worldwide. Finally, Free Guy is about to break the 300 million mark with it at 298.3 million. For markets reopening, because remember parts of Asia are still on some kind of lockdown, Indonesia has reopened its theaters as part of the reopening. Customers will have to be fully vaccinated if they want to enter, and like other countries, they can download an app and scan a barcode to show proof of vaccination. Moving on from the numbers in theaters, let's get to new movies in development. Variety has the exclusive on this, and that is Warner Brothers is working on a remake to The Bodyguard, and they have already hired Matthew Lopez to write the screenplay for it. No rumors on the two star leads, who have been has been reported yet. As for the idea of the remake, uh, it can work if you get a good pair. The first one did great because, oh, I don't know, Whitney Houston was in it, right? So maybe do the same thing, get a solid male lead and a female singer. Not sure. This movie will live and die by who they cast, really. Leica has decided on their next stop motion film. Travis Knight, the president and CEO of the studio, will be directing Wildwood, 
which is an adaptation of a novel. No word on a release date or who has been cast. I don't have much to say here except I hope that not only is this movie good, which it probably will be, but that it makes good money at the box office. No one really does stop motion films anymore, so it would be a shame if they stopped because they couldn't afford it. Universal is up next for a new film, and that is action comedy film starring Chris Pratt and Sam Richardson. It is being written by Jen D'Angelo, and that's all we know. Universal right now is uh, being real quiet on title, plot of the movie, possible director. You know, so we don't really know much more past that. Uh, so really, at this point, we just know it exists. Kind of. As for the two leads, they did play off each other well in the Tomorrow War. So with a better script, this could be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Next at the Toronto Film Festival, Deadline is exclusively reporting that a sequel to Twins is up for auction called Triplets. Shocking. Uh, the film reunites Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger with Tracy Morgan joining as the long-lost triplet. The director is Ivan Rittman and plans are for it to start filming next January in Boston. Right now, no word on who is bidding for the film. I hope the script for this is good because this sounds exactly like how the rest of the sequels the films made long ago were terrible. Right now, I do not see anything here that can prove it would be different from, say, a, uh, another Zoolander 2 from happening. Finally, for movies in production, this is not a new one, but an update as Warner Brothers has made a move for the next Fantastic Beasts film, and now has a full title called Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, and is being moved up. That's right, instead of letting the movie die next July, it will instead come out on April 15th, which is Easter weekend. So let's see, before it was going up against Black Panther 2, and in the following weeks, Black Adam and Indiana Jones 5. Now it will come out a few weeks after Doctor Strange, and a few weeks before Thor Love and Thunder. Warner Brothers was smart in moving it as it was going to get killed in July. No doubt, I have doubt about that. And April's a better spot for it with slightly less competition. The title itself is fine, if unoriginal, but it really just points out how they should have planned this better and named the series something else. As it looks like in this one, like in Grindelwald, the beasts themselves are side stuff and not the main course. Which is fine. Personally, I prefer that. But then stop calling it Fantastic Beasts and da da da. I wouldn't mind if with this film's release they do a whole rebranding of the three films because if this one does well they still got two more to go. For trailers this week we got new ones for both West Side Story and Halloween Kills both of which still look very good. Unlike last week we got some news for VOD Premium this week and let's start with Disney. This week, CEO Bob Chappick expanded on what Disney Plus Day will bring on November 12th, and it's quite a bit. For new content, on November 12th, Shang-Chi will be added at no extra charge, while Jungle Cruise will move from Premier Access to free for all subscribers. Along with that, there is a new film called Home Sweet Home Alone, a series of shorts starring Olaf from Frozen, and the first five episodes of Season 2 of The World According to Jeff Goldblum. This is on top of announcements of what will be coming down the road, and apparently there will also be a look into future projects for the MCU. Whether it will include films or not is not clear yet. So what's clear here, though, is two things. First, the 45-day window is very flexible for Disney. What we see now is that they will move things around as they see fit, but it is starting to look like going forward. The release of a blockbuster film is a 45-day release in theaters, then it will go to PVOD, as in if you want to own it right now, it will be probably 30 bucks instead of 20 then a while after, it'll go to physical media and Disney+. Plus. As for the Fox films like Free Guy, we do not know what streaming service it will end up on. But its 45-day window is almost over, and we'll be heading to, I guess, just regular VOD this Friday. I did see the price for pre-order is $20 instead of $30, but not clear if that's to rent or to buy. While this works great for Disney, as they have flexibility, I'm sure theaters are not too happy about this. Specifically, if they want to, they can shorten the window, like they did for their newest animated movie in, in, was it, Enchanto, having a 30-day window instead of 45. I will say, though, the one upside for theaters, however, is that the movies will not be going to streaming straight after the exclusivity is over, which does help them a bit. Because if Disney made it clear, hey, look, on this day, like, say, for Shang-Chi, mid-October, if you wait till here, Disney Plus, for free, no charge, there'd probably be a decent amount of people that will wait. But since they're being coy, now they're saying, well, it's coming to Disney+, Plus, but not until November. That might get people to say, well, I'll go see it in theaters now. I'm not going to wait two months. Also, Disney is clearly looking to build up Disney+, Plus as a brand itself, 
by declaring a special day for announcements and saving releases for it. You know, take Jungle Cruise. That's been out for almost two months now. You don't need to keep it to November and then add it for free, but they're going to help build up how special the day is. I do wonder as they continue to build this up yearly, how big will it get? Speaking of Disney Plus content, it was also announced this week that there is a remake of Flight of the Navigator, and it'll be a Disney Plus exclusive. Disney is doing the remake to their own film, obviously, and I've already signed on Bryce Dallas Howard to direct it. I've not watched the original, so I will not comment on it if it needs a remake, but Howard is a good director, so this could be good. Finally, to wrap up the episode, there are some streaming deals I wanted to mention. First is for HBO Max, which is offering a deal of 50% off for six months. That brings the ad-free plan to $7.49 per month. After the six months, it'll go back up to, to the regular $14.99. Uh, this is a deal by itself if you just wanted to watch the rest of Warner Brothers new releases this year, including The Matrix Resurrections and Dune, on top of the content already there. Offer ends September 26th. The second deal is until October 20th, and that is for Viacom CBS, where they are bundling the ad tier of Paramount Plus and Showtime for $10, or $13 if you want the ad free tier. Uh, I also have not found a date on when that expires like the HBO Max offer, so if you are considering signing up long term to Paramount Plus or Showtime, it looks like the time to join us now. And that is it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. A question for the episode is, of all the new movies in the work, are there any that stand out to you or none? Let me know on Facebook, link to the pages in the show notes. Thank you for listening.